Hey, it's Mr. Johns. Welcome to this episode of Grizz Tech. We're going to be making a fingerboard in this episode and maybe following episodes. We'll see. Um, have you ever wanted to make your own fingerboard? Uh, maybe you have played with these, uh, these boards in the past. Um, Tech Deck has been the has been the, the real popular um, company. Um, and, the, and the quality of a tech deck is, you know, is fair, is fair. Um, there are better tech, better tech decks or fingerboards, and we call them tech decks now, but they're fingerboards. Um, tech decks tend to be kind of plasticky, um, made entirely out of plastic. Whereas you can make them out of paper, you can make them out of uh, 3D printed material, but the, you know, the tried and true is making it out of real wood. I mean, that's what a skateboard is. And so we're trying to mimic uh, a real skateboard in miniature. That's what a fingerboard is. And you might say, well, what if I'm not interested in, you know, skateboarding or fingerboarding? Well, you know, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, still, making something is um, is a pretty fun process. If you were to look some of these wooden tech decks, wooden fingerboards up on the internet, you see that they, they can sell from thirty to fifty dollars. And so maybe just making one would be a, a nice little side business for you if you want. Uh, now you have to be careful with the graphics. You can't just steal graphics um, and sell. So you might want to come up with your own. Um, graphic line which is a real cool thing it could really take off if you're just using other people's graphics you're making something that someone else you're using something that someone else has already made so um, so I have a piece of um, birch plywood uh, 1 64th inch thick this is 6 by 12 6 inches by 12 inches um, and this runs about seven dollars so uh, midwestproducts.com is where I get my wood material. This is not cheap material. What's interesting is it is really almost like paper, but it is wood, 100% wood from a tree. So what we want to do is measure uh, on the millimeter side of your ruler. We want to measure 100 millimeters, and this ruler is not millimeters on that side. So <laughs> we're gonna flip it over and uh, metric, there we go, wow. Okay, for a minute, I uh, thought I didn't have a metric ruler. So we're looking at 100 millimeters. It's really just a little over 100, uh, but if you do it in uh, 100, like 101 or 100 and barely one, you'll end up with three fairly even sections. And so what we're going to do is we're going to mark 100, 100 on that side, and on this side, the same thing, so we can connect the dots. And so we're just barely over 100, barely over 200, and that takes you to the end. And then we're going to connect those lines. So simply straight across with a nice sharpened pencil. All right. And then on the other side, we are going to go 36 millimeters. And so we end up with, so 35, so remember millimeters uh, are the little lines on a metric ruler. The numbers are centimeters. And so uh, 35 centimeters is fine, but we're going 35 and one millimeter. And so the easiest way to read that is just 36 millimeters. And so I'm gonna measure 36 three times across the top and what, uh, what that does it gives us four equal rows or columns here and now let's get this on screen here and so the same thing on the other on the other end we're going to go 30 36 36 36 so our goal in step one here is to measure and cut out these wood sections and um, glue them together and put them in the vise. Okay, and I'll talk about the vise in a minute. Now, if you don't have the wood, can't afford the $7 for the wood, can't buy it online, obviously, 
You could go to a local hobby shop. They oftentimes have um, this material. So um, check out your local hobby or craft store and just look for the thinnest sheets. 164th inch thick. And so now scissors. Uh, this is the part that always blows me away. So here we, we have basically uh, three rows, columns, sorry, three columns of four rows uh, go this way. And so we can make a fingerboard out of four sections. And so we can make three fingerboards out of a $7 piece of wood. Now that's not everything. You have to have wheels, you have to have trucks. Uh, you want to have some kind of grip tape on top. And then look at how that cuts. It really does cut like paper, but you are cutting through wood from a tree. That is how thin it is. I love that. It's so cool that we don't have to use some kind of uh, power tool or something else. Just scissors. Scissors work great. All right, so uh, I'm going to put the rest of that off to the side and we will have um, our four four pieces okay so these are again just to repeat these are one you notice one of mine is a little bit wider than the others I didn't get them exactly the same but it doesn't matter because we need the width to be uh, these three right here. So these are 36. The, the last one was a little bit wider than 36. So it's a hun roughly 100 millimeters by 36 millimeters. Okay. And that's where we, um, that's where we are. We have four equal pieces. And so if you have wood glue, I use a uh, tight bond, original wood glue, professional strength, indoor use. Oh, interior use, same thing, indoor use. Um, sands easily short clamp time water cleanup now if you don't have wood glue elmer's white glue is fine i mean that's made for paper but it does work i've done it before and elmer's is fine so you don't need to go out and spend another seven dollars or whatever for a bottle of wood glue if you don't have it all right so what we want to do is glue uh these four pieces together and uh, this part can get kind of messy a lot of times i'll put um, something underneath them but with a, a wood surface like my desk here it's easier for me just to clean it up with a damp cloth um, when I'm done so I'm gonna put a just be real careful here just kind of a bead the whole thing does have to be covered so I am going to cover three of these pieces with wood glue and you'll see why in a minute, why it's three and not four, okay? So just wanna you know, cover uh, the whole thing. I like to, this is kind of a weird thing that I do, lick my finger and that adds a little bit of moisture to the, uh, to the glue and helps it um, move around a little bit. It also, I don't know if it keeps your finger cleaner or not, but make sure you, um, that second, lick tasted like glue that's a little bit gross um, but covering the entire the tire piece like that I'm not gonna lick it this time so I don't think I needed to so it's just fine without um, so basically you can see I'm getting glue all over the desk and now try not to move the wood around you don't want extra glue on the other side so try to keep it in one place like that okay uh, and then I do have a little bit of glue on my finger I'll just wipe it off on this extra piece so now what we can do is we can take the first piece that has glue on it and stack this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the corner because that gives me two corners off to the side. That gives me two corners to line it up. And I know that first piece is wider. That's fine. And now this second piece that doesn't have glue on it can go on top of sorry, this third piece that doesn't have glue on it can go on top of that second piece that had glue on top of it. And now you can start to see maybe why I didn't have to put any glue on that piece because now this fourth piece that has glue on it, I can flip over and I can sandwich that there. And so I end up with all four pieces glued together. Um, just 
doesn't matter so much that they're straight because we're going to be cutting a pattern out of that later anyway. And it doesn't really matter that I squish it together or flatten it or anything because the next step is to put it in a mold. So let's talk about the mold. So um, this is a 3D printed mold. Now you can buy a mold online for about $40. I looked it up. I thought about doing it. And then I realized I could just go online. I think I used Thingiverse.com. Um, and just typed in fingerboard mold and um, I tried several and, and 3D printed several until I found this particular one which I love it's my favorite so this one has number 20 on it because I made I think 25 molds um, for an entire class so this is the shape of the of a skateboard of a fingerboard um, in the plastic mold and you literally just take your um, birch set it down inside that mold and you can see that it fits perfectly between um, those ends and that's why we're using that size 100 millimeters and then we're going to force it to go down into that shape now keep in mind that a fingerboard is a little bit wider than a skateboard to scale it does end up a little bit uh, chunkier wider um, if it was truly to scale, it would be skinnier, um, but just a little bit easier with your fingers to have it wider. So we are going to now place the top of that mold. And these really, these ends really do help line up to make sure that we're lined up. Now look, if I were to, if I were to try to just squeeze this and hold this, it wouldn't work. There's no way I could, I, maybe I could just sit there and hold it. But it takes about 24 hours um, for the wood glue to... Uh, fully dry and so um, I invested in these little Jorgensen uh, I think they're called four inch clamps I'm not sure if that's really four inch maybe it's six inches well hey I have a ruler let's find out what they are really uh, well I, I don't know how they measure if they measure the total available I think they were called four inch clamps because you have four inches of room let me just something like that like it will fit a four inch I'm pretty sure that's what it is because it'll fit something four inches in between it so uh, I was a little bit discouraged at first realizing how many clamps I needed for a classroom because I'm a tech teacher and this is a classroom project and I need a class set of the and of clamps and clamps can be $15 each really excited to find these at Lowe's I think there were $3.99 maybe um, each and um, pretty sturdy pretty solid I think they'll I think they'll last forever I mean they're great so what we want to do is put um, the clamp I think just one clamp should do it uh, just right in the middle and they have rubber rubber ends on them so it doesn't damage whatever you're clamping but if I get that right in the middle lined up right in the middle hopefully then I can just twist this let's watch twist this handle until it starts to shape now if it doesn't work I'll use two clamps but I'm pretty sure um, it's gonna hold that shape pretty well it's not I don't know um, I think I'm gonna there's no reason I've got two clamps there's no reason not to use two clamps and so I'm going to go ahead and use a second clamp and do each end because I'm really working on that that sharp uh, end with the uh, with the real uh, real U-shaped part of the board. Now you don't want to go crazy tight because it could crack. This mold is plastic. I think the ones you buy online for forty bucks are like a rubber mold, and so. You know maybe better quality but uh, I've made several of these and so far no problems at all but just so you know don't go crazy and crank until you, you can't crank anymore it could crack the mold all you're doing is watching the board to make sure that there's no gaps and um, it looks like if we give it another half turn perhaps it looks like it is following the shape of um, the mold and uh, what you do now is you let it dry for 24 hours don't touch it put it off to the side and that's what we're gonna do now uh, and so 
um, with the magic of technology, we'll be back in a minute after this has dried for 24 hours.